Ah, uh, there's that classic PlayStation startup screen. I've said it before, but I love that. I don't know what it is about that, but I just love it. And there we go, Konami, back when they, they actually made games worth playing. But there you go, we are playing Castlevania Symphony of the Night. A 1997 action-adventure game uh, released by Konami. We are playing the PlayStation version, but we are playing it on my PlayStation 3. We are playing the original PlayStation version, so that way it will keep all the cutscenes and original audio. Konami, over the years, has done a... Uh, what's the best way to describe it? Konami has this bad habit of... of putting out their old classics, but changing a lot of the audio, and sometimes getting new voice work done, and... it's it's unfortunate, but it's, it's the case of things. So, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, like I said, is an action-adventure game, and it's one of my favorite games of all time. And I want to get a chance to show it to off to you guys. But I don't want to just play it as per normal. We're going to mix it up a little bit. We are going to play on Lucky Mode. Lucky Mode is a special mode that you can activate uh, by putting in a special code when you create your character. Now, maybe create the character is the, the wrong term, but when you name your save game. I was under the impression that you had to have beaten the game to start in lucky mode. And playing it on the PS3, I figured, oh boy, I'm going to have to go through this whole game and beat it first. But it ends up that one of my friends had already started a game on my PlayStation 3 and played through most of it. And I just kind of picked up from where he left off. But it is not a requirement to beat the game to play in lucky mode as I've discovered since. So, to activate Lucky Mode, we have to put in a special code, and it is X dash X exclamation No, not quotation. V quotation, 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 location, location, shut up. Q. Now, if I've done this right, we will start the game with really low stats, but our luck will be maxed out, making it more likely that we will find, uh, or rather collect, the hidden items that we can get through the course of the game from defeating enemies. Journey back to 1792 and the Transylvanian countryside of Romania. Now this is our opening cutscene, if we were playing the version on, say, Xbox Live or the PlayStation Network, we wouldn't be getting these cutscenes. Uh, there is a Saturn version, and I'm pretty sure all these cutscenes are intact. There's also a PSP version, I do not know whether or not the cutscenes are intact, and I'm pretty sure that uses the new voice app. This is the loading screen, and if we press the directional buttons, we can screw around with it a little bit. Alright, now the very first stage of the game is actually the very last stage of the previous game. Even though it said um, Bloodlines there, it's actually the last stage of Rondo of Blood. And we are playing Richter Belmont. Now once we cross through this door, we're going to have our... Uh, epic Confrontation with Count Dracula. 
and this part of the game plays like most traditional Castlevania games. And even though I'm slowing things down a little bit, the faster we get through this part of the game, and the better we do, the different effects it will have on Alucard, who is the next character we're going to play through the entirety of this game. So let's go take on Dracula and see some of this very iconic uh, dialogue that's about to happen. Die, monster. You don't belong in this world. It was not by my hand that I'm once again given flesh. I was called here by humans who wish to pay me tribute. Tribute? You steal men's souls and make them your slaves. Perhaps the same could be said of all religions. Your words are as empty as your soul. Mankind ill needs a savior such as you. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. But enough talk. How about you? Alright, boss fight time. This battle with Dracula is what would have been the final battle from Rondo of Blood. Now, Richter actually has a number of ways to deal with him. I don't remember all of his moves. He's got that uppercut there. He can also hold out his whip and swing it around to destroy Drax's projectiles. There's his slide. So I think if you're careful with the slide, you can actually do kind of a... Uh... Yeah, you... I thought there was a way to do like a sliding jump kick. Oh, I don't think we want to be over here. Now, I'm trying to be careful and not take too much damage. I'm trying not to get killed. But we actually can't lose this fight. If we run out of health, which is very possible, we'll get rescued. And if that happens, then we'll see what happens. Otherwise, we'll just wait. Now he transforms into his final form. And we are going to try to get as much damage as we can during this time. Come on, jump. Oh, there's that jump kick I was telling you about. Alright, and that is Maria. She is running in to save us. She's one of the characters that you could possibly save in Rondo with Blood. And she'll be playing an important part over the course of this game. And by virtue of her showing up, we've changed uh, the stats and items that Alucard will have when we start playing him. Alright, this goes by pretty quick, but I'll try to read it all for you. It was Richter Belmont, the legendary vampire hunter, who succeeded in finally ending the menace of Count Dracula, Lord of the Vampires, who had been brought back from the grave by the Dark Priest Shaft. However, one night four years later, under the glare of a full moon, Richter mysteriously vanished. With no idea of where to begin her search, Maria Renard set out to look for him. It was then that fate intervened. Castlevania, the castle of Dracula, which is rumored to appear once every century, suddenly materialized from out of the mist as if to show her the way. Meanwhile, powerful forces were struggling for the soul of a man named Alucard, the very same Alucard who had teamed up with Trevor Belmont to battle his immortal father, Count Vlad Trepis Dracula. Alucard, in order to purge the world of his own cursed bloodline, had submerged his vampiric powers and entered into what was supposed to be an eternal slumber, but now he is awake and aware of the evil once again at work in his homeland. The time has once again come for the forces of good and evil to engage in their ancient battle. Dracula's castle beckons for you, and no man can say who shall emerge victorious. 
Alucard is actually one of the characters that you can possibly meet in Castlevania 3, Dracula's Curse. And he returns as the protagonist of this game's story. But he looks very different from how he looked in uh, Castlevania 3. And let's screw around with the loading sign a little bit. Alright, it looks like it worked, because our HP is very low and so are our hearts. And there is Alucard, racing to the castle. And he's made it in. Now the game still plays a lot like uh, traditional Castlevania games. But this one includes RPG elements such as leveling up, uh, inventory management, equipment use, and a lot of adventure elements with exploration and puzzle solving. So if we look here, Alucard is currently at level 1 and all his stats are awful, with the exception of his luck. His luck is maxed out. So, with his luck so high, it's more likely that he will get uh, item drops, especially rare item drops from the enemies that he defeats. But he's going to have a harder time fighting them. Now, somebody in the chat is mentioning that we can bypass the part coming up. Now, I don't know if we can do it with Alucard, but I think we can do it with Richter. And Richter is uh, one of the characters we can play if we beat the game and put in another code. You see that block that we're standing on? That actually leads to another area that was scrapped for this version of the game. But there is a way to get to it. I just don't know how to do it. There's also a part later on where we'll be fighting these big wolves. And if we let one of the wolves hit us properly, it will send us flying to the other side of the castle. Well, maybe not the other side of the castle, but it will send us flying through a bunch of rooms. But let us bypass um, let us bypass something that's about to happen, but for this, for the purposes of this game, we're going to let everything more or less happen naturally, or as naturally as I can from how I know how to play the game. Careful, man. Alucard is just easily handling all these monsters that are coming at him and taking almost no damage from them either because he is currently equipped with all his Alucard equipment. All this Alucard equipment makes him very strong. But unfortunately, we're not going to get to hang on to it for very long. And you can already see that the zombie enemies that we're fighting here are dropping cloth tunics. They're also dropping money. That's another one of the RPG elements in this game, is that we are going to get money that we can use to buy and sell items. But we got this big rock here in front of us, and although we can easily go up and over it, we actually can also go through it. And going through it, we get the pot roast. And that will be amongst the items that we could potentially use. If we go down here, we have to fight the mermen. Classic, classic Castlevania enemies. And I think we might just slap them around a little bit, so we can gain a few levels while we have really good gear. And see what kind of goodies they drop. And I'm, I'm going to try to use more of the items than I normally do when I play through this. Like, I think we saw one of them drop. Oh, want to get out of the water. Water is bad. Alucard is one of those vampires that is hurt when he goes in the water. And what did we pick up? We picked up a monster vial. I don't think I've ever really put uh, much use into these items. 
So now we have a merman that's going to help us out. And that was it. Now in the classic Castle of Minions, you destroy candles, you get items from them. And we saw Richter doing it earlier. Eventually Alucard will be able to do that, but right now he's out of luck. Uh, and there are some nice goodies, but we can't get to them yet. Now, in most rooms, once you walk in and out of them, the monsters will respawn, like bats are back. But those wargs, those were special enemies. They are not coming back. Okay, I take that back. I'm wrong. They didn't come back. I was under the impression they didn't. Or maybe that's later. After we uh, we have our run-in with a very special enemy. Now, right now, Alucard is just doing the standard running, jumping, and attack. He will eventually get sub-weapons, like how we saw Richter throwing that cross around. Alucard will also learn to cast spells. Now, we can either learn the spells naturally by going to the item shop and buying them, or if we know how to do them, that's not one of them. That is one of the special, special things Alucard can do. In fact, a lot of the equipment that we'll get over the course of the game can do special tricks. But Alucard does not have the magic yet to start casting spells. So if you know already how to cast the spells, you can cast them whenever you have the MP for it. Or you might come across them completely by accident. Which happened to me a lot the first time I was playing it. That's enough playing around, let's start moving on with the game. One of the things I'm going to have to get used to is back dashing. That will get Alucard out of a lot of harm's way. Especially on lucky mode, since he will take abuse like no one's business. Alright, this ward. That ward right in front of us, we could pull off a trick with, where we get to keep are really good equipment, but, um, but for the purposes of this playthrough, I think we're not going to do that. And let's go have our special encounter. Ah, Alucard, what is your business here? I've come to put an end to this. Still befriending mortals. I'll not ask you to return to our side, but I demand you cease your attack. I will not. You shall regret those words. We will meet again. So yeah, that's death. And death it just took all of our goodies. Death is a major reoccurring uh, enemy uh, throughout the Castlevania series. He often serves as one of the big bad bosses over the course of the game. There are actually some Castlevania games where he is the final boss, as opposed to Dracula. But we may get a chance to deal with him a little more later. Alright, we are barehanded. But we do have the option to wear a cloth tunic, which affects our stats in no way whatsoever. Yep, all of our accessories except this, the Lapis Lazul, has been taken. Our helmet is gone, our shield, everything. But if we can beat this guy up without getting killed, and he can kill is pretty easy, 
we'll get something. And one hit will kill him. And we get a short sword. There's another dude. We got to kill him much more easily, and he dropped Red Rust, which is another sword. But that sword is actually weaker than using our, uh, our bare hands. Now, you may notice that the items appear in our inventory in the order we collect them, and that could get very messy very quickly. But thankfully, we can sort them however we like. I prefer to keep it the way it is, but if you want to change it up a bit, go right ahead. Now, I'm being told, quick, eat the pot roast. But we don't need to, because we've just made it to our first save room. Alucard will rest here in this coffin. It will restore his magic and his HP, and it will save the game. Now, it's only one save file to file name. And now we have, or at least I thought we would have new enemies. Oh, and there's another goodie we can't get to. Oh, and that sparkly thing right there is our first relic, the Cube of Zoe. Over the course of the game, we will collect relics that have different effects on the game. In this case, the Cube of Zoe will cause items to materialize. That means if we smash open a candle, a goodie will show up. Which includes hearts, money, and sub-weapons. And we are now entering our first area, the Alchemy Laboratory. We will only get the names of the new areas the first time that we enter any of them. Ow, you yeah, see that hurt. Yeah, I'm being very careful, very cautious. Skeletons are a reoccurring enemy in the Castlevania series, and that right there is a bloody skeleton. I think sometimes they're even called red skeletons. But they don't stay dead. We hit that pressure plate and we drop the spikes. And what do we find over here? Hide Curus. That armor will actually improve our defense a little bit. And we are going to need as much defense as we can get our hands on. In fact, I will probably be very careful going through this, and probably return to our save room a number of times. Uh, good thing we were right out of that guy's way. Hey, what do you know? Save room. And there is a nice tough enemy. These guys are called Axe Lords. Maybe they're just called Axe Armor. We don't want to be careful with them, especially since we're so weak, they're going to take a long time to kill. But we can smash their axes out of the air. And what did you drop? Just some money. Okay, I think down here is our first hidden area. 
And what are we gonna find down here? Find the Life Max Up item. Those are hidden throughout the castle all over the place. Those will increase the maximum HP we have. And if I remember correctly, yep, there's another secret right here. And that is the Max Heart Up item. That will give us more hearts that we can have at a time. I think right now we have, what, 18? Yes. The hearts are the ammunition for our sub-weapons. Uh, right now, Alucard doesn't have a sub-weapon. Okay, I take it back, he has a dagger. And if we hold up and attack, we'll throw a dagger. He can throw as many as he has hearts. In some cases, the sub-weapons are more powerful than our current weapon. In some cases, they're not. Some of the RPG elements in this game include that enemies take different damage from different uh, attack types. We may find enemies that take more damage from, say, uh, poison or holy. Oh, now those of you watching in the stream, if you happen to know where a secret area is hidden, or any little tricks you feel like sharing, please do. I, I will not uh, claim to know everything about this game, and there is a lot to know in this game. There is so much to do, I am still finding new things out. Okay, there is our key. And that also gives us some more defense. Hit all the walls. Well, that's good advice, actually. But I, I, I meant something a little more, uh, a little more direct. Like say, hey, Ed, that that wall you just walked by. If you, you know, if you hit it enough, it will break. Careful with these guys. They're around here somewhere. Because in addition to damaging you, they can poison you. There are stat status effects in this game. Some are beneficial, some are not so beneficial. See, Alucard throws those daggers pretty quick. many of these enemies as I can, because we need the XP badly, and I also want to see what, if any, goodies they drop. Well, that was, uh, that was less than productive. Now I need to go heal myself again. Let's not screw around with these guys. Waste any more of your time.
So we're actually really close to our next boss fight. And I doubt I'm going to handle it very well. And that is a new sub-weapon, that is the axe. Which I think is much better for what we have coming up. Uh, most of our sub-weapons use one heart for one use. But as we play along, we'll see that there are sub-weapons that use more than one heart per use. And here is our first boss fight. This is Slora and Gibon. They are reoccurring enemies of the Castlevania series. I've already used up all my hearts. Here, they will be our first boss fight. Uh, in some versions of the game, they serve as, uh, you know, endgame bosses. I think I first remember seeing these guys in Super Castlevania, and in Super Castlevania, they were uh, endgame bosses. Alucard has two hands, and the square button is one hand, and the circle button is the other. We're going to use that potion to heal. Ow. I don't want to get your hands on your buddy. Oh, he's mad now. Oh, not good. Let's see that pot roast. Whoa, that was close. In the case of food items, we actually have to drop it before we can use it. And resist thunder ain't gonna help us much with these guys who are throwing fire at us. Whoa. At least I think it's fire. Come on, you. actually turning into a real fight. I love it. We are out of healing items. Oof, not good. There we go. Alright, well, they took us out. But that's alright, I think this is good enough for our first episode of Let's Play Castlevania Lucky Mode. And I think we're going to call it an episode here. So guys, thank you for watching, and I look forward to playing more episodes of this with you. Take care of yourselves.